So we're here with the 336 Next Gen Excavator, which is completely loaded with technology. And when I say technology, what's that mean? Well, it means a lot of things. We're offering a lot of things on this machine as far as grade control, depth and slope, grade with assist, payload with, with scales basically on, on, from the bucket, to these e-fence features which uh, give the operator and people around them some safety features. And, in order for all those things to work, we have to have a few things on the machine to make it all happen, and they all have to work together. So the, the point of grade control, for instance, is the bucket teeth, that is the, the main focal point of everything you're doing with grade control, whether it's, whether it's a bulldozer or a motor grader, you're looking at the bottom of the cutting edge on a dozer or, or a grader. It's the same thing with an excavator. I want that bucket tooth. It's the end of the grade rod. It's the survey stake. So in order for it to get that point, to know where that point is in the world, we have to have some sensors on the machine. And we start right here with the, at the bucket. We have an AMR sensor right here, which tells you the, the complete angle of the bucket. And then if we look up the stick, we have an IMU sensor, which is telling you the angle of the stick at all times. And then as we look up at the boom, we have the same IMU sensor, which is at the boom. And then we have one at the car body, which is telling you how the machine is sitting side to side and forward or backwards. So, all of those things working together is what tells this machine what to do. Now, in two-dimensional, it's all relative as to where the tracks are. Two-dimensional, I do not know where this machine is in the world. I do not know where northern, eastern elevations. If I dig a trench and I back up two feet, the machine doesn't know it. The only thing I know is relative to the tracks is the degrees of the boom stick and bucket. So in order for all that to work for 3D, I have to add some 3D sensors, and we add Zephyr 3s. And then we add an additional EC520. The EC520 is, take it as, as your PC at home. You've got your tower, the brain box of your computer, and you also have your monitor on top of your desk. So the EC520 is virtually the tower of your computer. It's the brains of it. It holds all the machine calibrations. It holds the machine dimensions. It holds all the design files. It, it is, it's all the brains. And then the TD520, which is the 3D display inside the cab, that's the monitor, that's the projector. So it's giving you all the information that you need. The information you're asking for is from the bucket tip. And you're getting northern, eastern elevations all the time from that bucket tip. And it may depend on which one you want. You might have one on the left, you might have one on the right, you might have one in the center. It's all application specific because if I'm cutting a slope and I have my left bucket tip uh, selected, I can potentially cut into the toe of a slope. So you have to be uh, careful as to where you set your bucket tip. All those things, because the machine is electronic over hydraulic, it's electric. So because it is electric, we have capabilities beyond what we've ever thought about having on excavators for, for CAT. So that's why we're able to do things like e-fence. And e-fence is a safety feature that stops this bucket from getting into an object. So if I, when we have e-swing, left and right, we have e-sealing, which is gonna stop the stick from getting up into an object, such as a power line, or you're working under a bridge deck, or you're working inside of a skeleton building. It's gonna keep the top of that stick from hitting that obstruction. We have e-floor, which I can set from the bucket tip down below. If I've just exposed a gas main, and I don't want that bucket to get close to that, I can go into the monitor and I can put the depth in relative to the bottom of the tracks, or I can get my bucket close to that object, turn on each floor, and it's going to prevent that bucket from going down. I can be all the way up in the air with the boom, and I can boom down 100%. It will not allow that bucket to go past that point. I have E-wall. If I'm working up against a building, and I'm digging this way, and here's the building, I can set an E-wall that will not allow any part of the front structure to get into that building. It's going to physically stop the boom stick and bucket from getting to that point. We have e-swing left and right, which is a really handy one for working in live traffic. If I have live traffic to the right and Jersey barriers and I'm working in this section, I can set my e-swing right. I physically set my bucket to the point where I don't want it to go past. I turn on e-swing right. Again, no matter what I do, no matter how fast I physically swing, it will not allow that bucket to go past that zone. Meaning I can't swing that bucket into live traffic if in case I accidentally grab the stick by accident or I'm not paying attention. I can set it on the left is right. Another great feature is cab avoidance. Uh, some configurations on these machines, if you add a coupler and long GET and a longer stick, the bucket can strike the cab. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's expensive and it's also dangerous. So we have a feature in here now, because I know where this bucket tip is at all times, 
I can turn on the cab avoidance and it will not allow that bucket to get into the cab. And it gives it about a oh, foot and a half to a half of a meter away from the cab. Something else I can do with that same feature is I can extend that invisible shield around the cab out. If I have a piece of uh, concrete in the bucket that sticks four foot side outside the bucket, that foot and a half isn't gonna do me any good. It's still gonna allow that to get into the bucket. So if I extend that invisible zone all the way around the cab, it's not gonna allow me to get anything within four foot of the cab. It's just a feature to keep the cab safe, to keep the operator safe, and any, anybody else around it. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is I can have all these on at one time. If I'm working under power lines and I have e-sealing on and I'm working on live traffic to the right side of me, I can have all of these features on all at the same time. And to add to all of that, this machine specifically has four cameras on it. We have 360 degree visibility. So if you think about all those safety features that we have on there, and then you have virtually a drone view of this excavator, no blind spots, that is about as safe as you can make this machine. And we're really looking forward to it. A lot of good opportunities coming out of that. That's all just the two-dimensional world. Now, if we want to go into the 3D world, and that's a fast-coming machine to machine control, is I need all these things I just talked about, and I need the information to the bucket tip, but now I'm going to add the north and easing elevation. I'll be able to do more complicated slopes, ponds, golf courses, trenches, whatever it may be. I need to add the, the GPS equipment, which would be the radio, the antennas, and the receivers, along with the additional TD520 to make that full three-dimensional.